Hey, good looking. Thanks so much for joining me. I've got my sunglasses on. So if you're catching me on the replay, then I just want to make sure everything's working correctly and just take a couple minutes to get started and get everything ready. So when I take the sunglasses off, that's when we'll begin. So, okay. Everything is working correctly. Yes, I like that. Okay. Okay. Can everybody hear this? I believe they can. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take out my earbud. That was really, really crazy. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, you can. Yes, you can. All right. And then we can also switch over to that. Perfect. Okay, so while we wait, and before we get started, I just want to let you all know I am Kendra Morgan Official, and I put out content weekly centered around makeup brushes that aren't Morphe, sunscreens, and single eyeshadows. And today we're going to be talking about single eyeshadows. So um, just kind of getting everything prepared. And so you guys all know... I did not choose Kendra Morgan official, the name, the name chose me. Um, it really, there was like already eight Kendra Morgans and my brother was like, I don't know which one to subscribe to put one on one after your name or something like that. And I was like, what about official? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. I just don't know which one you are. <laughs> so I just put official down and it stuck. And so that's the reason that I have it. It's not like, um, it's not like I really <laughs> wanted that to be my name, but there's eight other Kendra Morgans. So, okay, we are going to be getting started soon and uh, we got a couple minutes. So I'm just gonna go over a couple things. If you're catching me on the replay, uh, make sure that you like this video also and comment down below and catch us on the replay. I go in and I check all my comments. So you guys feel free to do that. And, um, Oh, while I'm at it. So I know I make fun of people who get, tr who put up trailers, but I thought about doing a trailer. Now, if I do this trailer, it's not going to be one that you will forget. It will be something that you will definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, okay, good. I still got sound. I just like freak out now because I, I didn't have sound in the last live stream. So it was like kind of crazy. Um, also we're going to be going over the eight makeup geek foiled shadows, and that's also linked in the description box and it is an affiliate code. So I will make a commission off of that. If you choose to buy. <laughs> I should do like a counter, but I just, I don't. All right. So we've got like two minutes remaining. What can I mess up in those two minutes? That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Um, I think. Okay. So back to the trailer. I want to, I've got this like idea in my mind to do a trailer because I get so, it gets difficult to remind myself during a video that is cut and polished and edited to make sure I put in there kind of like my tagline or whatever and say my name and make sure you subscribe. So I thought about putting together a trailer that kind of talks about what exactly I would be saying any which way. So it wouldn't be longer than seven to 10 seconds of your time. And it would just kind of a nice little visual and audio thing. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of a trailer, but this is unique. I would be filming it all myself and I just, I just, I'm not a trailers person. I will skip any trailer that I see on anybody's page because I like to get to the meat of the video. Like I just don't have a lot of time. So, okay. So we're pretty close to the nine o'clock mark. We've been spending a couple minutes here. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the sunglasses and this is your cue to start the live stream. Woo -woo. Okay. Kendra Morgan official here, and we are going to be going over some brand new makeup geek foiled eyeshadows and you can see them. 
Good morning, Stephen. How are you doing? So I jumped on a couple minutes early because I wanted to make sure that my audio was working properly and everything like that. I checked last night as well, and I made sure that everything was working. So everything should be fine. And I also have a um, headset over here so I can uh, check it out, make sure everything's working. So, okay, we are going to get into some swatches of the new foil shadows. I bought all eight of them. They are, I think, returning shades from Makeup Geek's old rounds. And she just used the new formula. I'll go over ingredients. So I've got a package from the old one and I've got a new package so you can take a look at those. And then I want to do some swatch comparisons. I actually have three Makeup Geek shadows. I have Fortune Teller, I have Untamed, and I think I have Curtain Call, which I was really surprised about, but I have all three of those. And we'll go ahead and swatch compare those. And then if I got enough time left, I wanna go ahead and show you guys what they look like on the eyes. And you know, I'm okay with doing one as the old round, one as the new one, because I know a lot of my subscribers, my community already owns these shadows. So they're thinking to themselves, do I need to get another shadow? Like, do I need to spend this money? And so I'll show you guys, we'll find out. We're gonna find out together because I've never put these on my lids yet. I've only swatched them. So also I have a TikTok, it's not linked down below, but I will probably get to that afterwards. I'm gonna do my best to try and get timestamps put in because I know when you've got 55 minutes of content, you're not, you're not looking to watch the whole thing. So good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody who is joining me live. We are going to be swatching the brand new Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadows. So you ready to have some fun? Let's have some fun. Um, okay, so here they are. Why did it do it backwards though? I actually wanted it the other way. Boom, there we go. So we'll be looking at these. This picture here that's featured on the Makeup Geek website doesn't really do the shadows justice. So I'll try to give you guys a couple different lighting options as well. So we'll go ahead and um, get to that right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get started and we'll head over to the drawing board right now and take a look. So the I'll get to the ingredient list as soon as I do swatches, but here are the eight shadows that are new minus this little guy and minus I think one of the other ones in here, but okay. Epic duochrome. Okay, so let's get started. There is epic right there. Does this like autofocus? I wish it, if you guys give me just a moment. There we go. Okay. So here's Epic. We'll just do that as a first swatch. Um, Steven, if it is, it's a very soft duochrome. Okay. I'm sure nobody really wants to see my big fat arm. So if it is, it's a very soft one, but let's go ahead and layer that up just a little bit. And there's the swoop, sorry, there's the swatch. I would say no, it's not. I don't think it's one of the dual chromes. I could be wrong though. It's a beautiful emerald. I guess there is a slight base underneath, like ever so slightly. Okay, and so that is epic. Oh, I need to get my little wipe out. Hang tight for just a moment. I have to use, oh, thank you. I have to use a the onboard mic on my laptop because I tried to use another mic and it just kept going in and out and stuff like that. So I do apologize. I don't know if the sound's going to be all that great when I do it, but hello. Okay, next one up, we've got Magic Act. Okay, perfect. I'm just kind of concerned because it's not like a nice microphone. It's just my laptop microphone. So I'm, <laughs> I just got to use what I got. Okay, let's go ahead and get this. These are super creamy. This one is kind of a 
Hello, hello, all who are joining us. We are swatching the Makeup Geek Foiled Shadows, the brand new ones. So these have a really, really high luster and they have a nice, you know, pigment behind them. So I'm eager to see how they look against the old formula, which is different, by the way. Okay, next. So here we go, high wire. And Marlena Stell, I watched her video on the launch of these. She said they're kind of between a cream and a powder. So I'm wondering if they would be similar to like a Natasha Denona formula. Okay, I'm gonna hold my arm up. Oop. Let me move my notebook. Now I can hold my arm up so you guys can see these swatches. Okay. Yeah, they are a little bit more on the satin side. I have to agree with you, Stephen. They definitely look a little bit more on the satin side. All right. Let's go ahead and get into Fortune Teller. Yeah, they're not sparkly at all. So they're kind of more of like what I would call like those solid state, tried and true. Just overall really good shadows. You know what I'm saying? Like glam shop, that might be like, that's taking a chance. If you're going to do your makeup and use a glam shop shadow, sometimes, you know, they work out. Sometimes they're kind of finicky. That's not the case with Makeup Geek. All right. Ooh, that one's pretty. It's like um antique slash green gold or yeah, green gold. See that green undertone? Yes, a reliable shadow that works for any skin tone. Yes. Okay. And then let's do Untamed and then we'll do Curtain Call. So there's Untamed. I think I got this all wiped off, I'm not sure. I mean, you can see, it kind of reminds me of, because I do have a couple of Natasha Denona shadows um, from the Ayana and the Jubilee palette. That one cream to powder formula, that's kind of what this reminds me of. <laughs> yeah, Stephen. So, I mean, if you are in the market to get some just really good shadows that, like I said, they're tried and true. You know they're going to work. They're never going to fuss. They're just really good workhorses. That's what I think of when I think of Makeup Geek. Okay. Yeah, Untamed. All right, the next shadow. I'm going to go ahead and do Curtain Call real quick. So, yeah, that brings me up to Natasha Denona. It's just, I don't know about her sometimes. You know, her formulas, It's I think it's made in Italy, so it is probably custom. But I did not. So I think they're $8.49 a shadow. Here, let me just go ahead and give you curtain call, curtain call swatch. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring up real quick my screen share. Oops. So let's go ahead and bring up these right there. And is the price on it? Oh my goodness. It's not. I think they're $8.49 a shadow.
Yes, 849 a shadow. You guys, I have an affiliate link with Makeup Geek and it should be in the description box. So you guys can use that first. I think I think you'll save 10%. So, I mean, I always just use um, an affiliate link or depending on the size of my order, I'll just use one of my $10 off coupons that I get because I've referred a few friends there. And also you guys, anybody can sign up for like, a ref not a referral link, but it's basically a friend's link. So if you use it and you give it to somebody else, you know, just pass it along, then they get $10 off and she, okay. So actually let's go through that real quick. So how you would order these shadows. This is probably the most economical way. And this is the way I did it. I just, um, so what I did was I made, I created a nine pan and I grabbed all eight of the shadows and then I put in one more shade. I'm going to do a giveaway. And so that's how I chose it. And then that way it's only $38 for all eight of these brand new foil shadows, plus a shadow of your choice. It could be anything. I just grew, I threw in another foil because I've got some Sydney gray shadows. And then, so I just grabbed a foiled shadow that I know everybody would you know love and it would look good on everybody. That's how I did it. And so it would cost you $38. If you only wanted four, there's a build your own mini palette for $18 and you can grab four of the shadows. So that's another way. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not here to try to sell you something, but let me sell you something. You know what I mean? I mean, if you're in the market to buy some really good quality shadows, I think I have used Natasha Denone's formula. It does not stay on my eyes. I don't know why that and Tara Moons. Don't ask me why. There's something that they use in their formula that doesn't stay on my lids. Now, if you guys have ever seen me use Flower Beauty, that stuff is so slippery. It's so wet feeling. It's so like buttery goodness and it stays on my lid. I mean, it will transfer and crease on me about six hours later, but it will, for the most part, work out okay. Let's go ahead and go back to the drawing board. I'm going to go ahead and finish up these swatches for you guys. Okay. We just got done with Curtain Call. And now we're on to Charmed. Oh, one of the most beautiful shades she has come out with so far. It's this like, so Marlena describes it as if you were going to dip your fingers into a silver, but you weren't 100% sure you liked that shade silver, this would be it. Yeah, Terra Moons, honey, Tasha. Terra Moons does not stay on my eyes. I've tried everything. I will say the only thing I have not tried yet is the NYX glitter glue. I um, lost my NYX glitter glue. So I need to get another one. And that's the only one I have not tried. But I've tried eyeshadow primers. I've used MAC Painterly Base. I've tried concealers and setting those concealers and then putting it on. I mean, 20 minutes later, it just doesn't, it doesn't go. I think the only other primer I haven't tried is the Urban Decay um, primer. But I've tried like Pure Cosmetics, I've tried MAC Painterly, I've tried Milani's, I've tried, I think I've mostly tried Drugstore. And then I've tried a couple of other like kind of off brands. Yeah, I have um, really, really oily lids as well, Steven. So I mean, pretty much anything that I use, it will eventually crease. It's not a matter of if it's when. Okay. Then we've got Jester, and that's the last one. This right here, this olive green. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. I love it. Now, we need to make these juicier, as Hannah Louise Poston puts. We can make these juicy so you can see them. Okay, and does that work, Stephen, if you use the Urban Decay one? I think I'm just going to go pick it up next time. That and some Refi Brow products because um, Kelly sold me on that. So there they are. And if you guys hang on just a second, I'll go ahead and grab my screen again. Placing this all down. And you guys can see the shadows. All nice and focused in. Let me just swatch Epic one more time because it's not juicy enough for me. <laughs> there we go. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and look at them here. Oh, sorry guys. Mm -hmm. I'm literally doing a squat. <laughs> but there they are. And I'm just trying to give you guys a couple different lighting options. That didn't work. Oh, look, I just laid my hands in my power pigments and, or my arm in my power pigment and I did that to me. But there they are. They're really, really gorgeous. Just really good overall, awesome, amazing quality shadows. I... I've loved Makeup Geek since the beginning. I know that sometimes, I just don't know if I want to dive into the drama or the politics of it, but I guess I can just kind of get into, like, I'm just going to, like, just scratch the surface. I feel like if you are always, you know, turning your away or turning your cheek to every single brand owner who doesn't behave the way you would like them to behave, let's just put it that way, um, you know, you're going to be, you're, you're going to be using, you know, brands that don't exist anymore, Coastal Sims. Because it's like everywhere you turn, there's always a brand with drama behind them. It seems like it just seems like it anyways. I don't know. I could be wrong. Well, Urban Decay it is then because I think that's the only one I never did try. And I just never did because I tried the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. And that to me, I was told that was for oily lids. And I told I was told Urban Decay was just like for, you know, regular lids. Um, so no, not, not as like a brand owner, but Marlena does step in sometimes since she is the CEO and she's made comments about things and people didn't really care for that too much. And one of the comments that she made, I guess it does. Um, oh, you only have their empty palettes. Yes. Get an empty palette. Everybody should own one of these. Um, I guess, um, she has, said that she used to rely on influencer marketing, you know, like the beauty YouTubers. Uh, I won't mention any names, <coughs> Jacqueline Hill. And then the other one that's really big and he's, he's been in some drama gettings too. And then she said, you know, kind of ate her words and was like, we need to be focusing on smaller influencers, but she really wasn't backing that word up by actually putting, you know, putting her money where her mouth was kind of thing. Some people felt like it. Some people felt like that anyways. Um, and she hasn't really been working with the smaller influencers. I feel like she has, I, I mean, but I do know that some people, you know, they have strong opinions about that. And I think these are channels that are more like in the middle, they're not considered small and they're not considered like super large. So like they might have a hundred to 300,000 subscribers on their YouTube channel. And so they've had a couple words to say. And I know that she kind of also made a comment on Temptalia's blog in regards to some lipsticks that Temptalia reviewed. And she just kind of made a comment and it's like, just, you know, this is a reviewer, let it be. And, and I don't think Temptalia said anything bad about her formula even or anything like that. And the formula is not even being sold anymore. Like I can't get a hold of any of her lipsticks. So that's just, you know, she's just very passionate. This is her bread and butter. This is kind of her, I don't want to say life because now she's got a husband and, you know, a family, but, and a little girl, but you can really tell she's very passionate about her company. And, and anytime somebody says something negative about it, you always want to like defend yourself, right? That's where I feel like she was coming from. But anyways, I'm not going to get into too much more about that. I think Makeup Geek is a ride or die. It's just going to be, a, you know, like, they're just really, really good shadows. And they don't get a lot of love because they're just, they're just that. They're not going to release a whole bunch of product all the time. That's not really what they, they're not a fast fashion makeup brand. They are sustainable. They practice sustainable. They're very ethical. They try to, you know, they treat their workers well. They source their uh, raw ingredients ethically and all that stuff. So just overall a really good brand to work with. So, okay, let's go back to the drawing board. Let's swatch the three old formula shadows that I have against the new formulas and see if there's anything different. So if any of you guys own some of the old foil shadows, you can see whether or not repurchasing might be an option. But before that, let's go ahead and... Sorry, Stephen, I am... I'm ADHD, sorry, sorry. And then here I am drinking coffee, so I'll switch to water. <laughs> So uh, she reminds me of, who does she remind me of? I don't even remember. I probably just didn't really know where I was going with that. So I just moved to a different um, topic. I really don't like talking about that stuff makes me nervous. 
it makes me super nervous because I'm afraid somebody's going to get mad at me for saying something like, yeah, Marlena has, you know, put her foot in her mouth, bloody blah, blah, blah. What brand has not I mean, come on, Too Faced. <laughs> and so I just, I'm kind of like, eh, I just got to stay away from that. Let's just, let's just talk about the makeup. You know, like Natty said, Nady from Pop Lux, this is about the products, not about the people. So don't, don't get like crazy or anything like that. All right, let me go ahead and show you guys the ingredients and then we will go ahead and do the swatch comparisons. So. All right, so here we go. This is the old form and I'm going to put them up side by side so you guys can see them and I'm going to focus in on it. Sorry, I have to bring my camera up. If you are catching this on the replay, I am going to put this ooh, right here so that you can focus and then just screenshot that or do whatever you need to do. This is just a shadow I repressed from a, there you go. I hope you guys can read off that black. That's a little bit harder to read. Let me see if I focused correctly. All right, so there you go. Okay, now I've got these three rounds right here. Let me refocus. There we go. I have to manually focus that in, that's crazy. Maybe I can do it from my actual computer since I have to have the app, I don't know. And then here is, all right, thanks so much for joining us, Steven, and you have a great and wonderful day. Okay. Here's going to be the first one. I believe it's fortune teller. Yeah, that's fortune teller. Here's the new. Okay. And here is the old formula. I think my skin kind of drug on that one. So it does look like this is a little bit more orange. I don't know if this helps like a visual cue. Mm, no, actually I think it's just where they are swatched. Yeah, if I'm actually looking at this looks a little bit more opaque than this one. But I think for the most part, we're good. These are pretty similar. Now, if you look at the formula, you will see there's a little bit of a difference, but not very much. It looks like the newer formula has less different stuff. Sorry, let me move my comments back down here. Okay, move my mouse away. Wipe off my hands here, folks. Dry it off. The next one we shall swatch, and I'll try to do my best to swatch them right next to each other, is Untamed. Here is New. And here is old. Okay, that was because I skipped over on my skin. That had nothing to do with the formula. There we go. I would say they're very, very similar. In my career here as a duper, these would be dupes. I mean, like this is the definition of a dupe if I ever saw one, but they are the exact same shade. They just do have some formula differences. It seems like the new formula has less stuff in it. So, okay. Oh, that orange isn't wanting to come off too well. All right, last one. Curtain call. So here's the new. Ooh, that is so pretty. There's the new. Hello, hi, thank you so much for joining us. 
I caught your last video. It was really nice. I can't pronounce the city where you vlogged at, but it was super nice. Here's the old curtain call. I think she did an exceptional job making these, you know, pretty much spot on the same. Where test wise, I could not tell you, but I do have a video out and I can link it down below for you later where I test out the old formula versus the new formula. I think I used whimsical and whimsical is a foiled. So I think that um, in terms of longevity, they should both, you know, should both be about the same. So, okay. And that is it. Okay, so that is it. I think I've kind of gotten everything that I've wanted to talk about. So I thought I would do a little bit of a demonstration. I brought my brushes over here and just kind of do some makeup on the side. But before we get into that, I do want to take a few moments and show you guys some of the palettes that I've put in, like my Build Your Own palettes that I've put together. Just because I've started um, making so many. <laughs> okay, the first one, and you guys got to see that live stream. Boy, that was crazy. And that was the Elf by Chipotle collab. So here's the palette and the shadows. I thought about doing some a look with this and maybe like a video, but it would be really, really, really short and just do kind of like a swatch party with it. But that is my Elf Chipotle palette. So I use that. I am still finding myself using this Sydney Grace rendition of the Quint Dior. I think it's Nightbird. Might be, it's either Nightbird or Early Bird. One or the other. But anyways, I use that. Um, you guys just saw, I released that video, but this is the It's a Mood dupe palette or duping the vibes, if you will. Actually, this has more shadows in it, so it's like reverse duping the vibes, <laughs> but it's using ColourPop shadows that I already have in my collection. So if you guys haven't checked out that video, that's the latest one that I've uh, released. And I did use this the other day. I have to say I was, uh, I used a couple shadows and I was not ready for ColourPop's payoff and I got some shadows that I was not expecting to perform that way. They were way, way pigmented. And then finally, this is the one that I'm currently working on and it is, you guys, oh, we're missing one. We are missing one shade, but it is, I don't know, do you guys, can you guys guess what this is? This is the new Gucci palette. So I duped it using all Makeup Geek shadows. I figure I'm doing a live stream showing off the shades. Oh, you know which one it is? It's this one right here. It's um, Charmed. That's supposed to be in here. Yeah, there you go. Um, so I used all Makeup Geek shadows, both round and uh, some squares rebrand. Then this came from my Pat McGrath. Just, just to be like extra, I used a Pat McGrath from the Celestial Divinity because she is launching a new, looks like mega, mega mothership palette. So I thought I'd, you know, whip one of those puppies out and use that. So I've been using this the last couple of days really, really like the sophistication of those shadows that I picked out for that. So, okay. Class is dismissed. Oh, oh, this one that fell down. Yeah, this one right here. So this brush right here, this one is going to be amazing. Let's use it. Let's use it today. Um, I picked up the new holiday collection Mac palette and the 224 brush. You know what? Let's use this palette right here. Oh, it was so beautiful when I used it yesterday. Anyway, so I picked that up and I picked up the brush and the brush is what I'm most interested in. So I'm going to be doing a video on that, doing a comparison. I'm going to do as much, um, research as I can about Max brushes and kind of what's happened, but it always seems to lead to a dead end. I'm just taking Bellini and I'm pushing that into the crease. So that's Bellini. Um, you can't even see it. How cute. Kendra. There you go. Bellini pushing that into the crease on both sides. <clears throat> I 
I never use this brush because it is very, very scratchy, but it works really well. Like I can probably swipe about five times and it would be totally acceptable if I did that. Switching over to this Smith 235 and dipping into, which one did I end up using? Honey Badger. And just placing that into the outer third of my eyelid. Focus it right there on the outer third, kind of bring it down. I do have lashes on, so I'm not here to, you know, use something crazy, but. But I do want a little color on the lid. All right, perfect. Let's compare. Should I use some orange? Oops. Yeah, let's do. Let's put this one right here, which I think is, what is it, untamed? Yeah, this one's untamed because this is Curtain Call and this is Fortune Teller, so this is untamed. So let's do um, left eye is going to be new, right eye is going to be old. All right. I've got my Mac Fix Plus, and I've got a Mac 242, and I've got a Refer P21. So let's do round is going to be Refer, Refer round, and Mac will be square. Mac schmack. There you go. So I will spritz it just a little bit because I really don't want to get fallout, folks. I'm not about that life. I left it years ago. So round should be right. Yeah, that way we can do R, 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 you know. So it'll be my left, your right, but in my head I need to do the round on the right. There we go. It's pretty, it's very pretty. And it went on like a dream. Here's the next one. This is the round, which is going on my right. Spritz a little Mac Fix Plus on it, and I'm going to go in. Hopefully it's not a dirty brush. Oh, my lash is falling off. Wonderful. This one's a little bit, actually, this is a little harder to pick up. It wasn't quite as creamy. It does look a little darker. Um, to be 100% honest, I think I didn't put enough on this one. Because I don't see the full opacity that I'm desiring. This formula, I love it because it works so well with a brush. There we go. Okay, I think they are both the same. You see that? I'm just gonna deepen up with a little bit of a darker brown in the corner. Let's take, let's take from the neutrals. And let's use chocolate wasted. I'm gonna stay super warm, super golden, if you will. Oh, thank you. It is. It's a very stunning shade and especially complements blue eyes because orange and blue are opposite on the color wheel. So I just, they were handing out these cards. No, I can't think they were handing me them personally, but they were giving these cards out with the Matrix palettes, uh, Mega palettes, excuse me. And so I have a bunch of these cards. <sighs> yeah, so, you know, I think she's supposed to be releasing some duochromes. And I know Steven asked earlier if Epic was a duochrome. I didn't think it was. Maybe I'm wrong. It might be an, a duochrome. But if you're not 100% satisfied with the shades, I would say wait a little bit. Because I know she has already said something about she's putting together enough um, shadows that are going to be foiled and metallic that she's going to make a 28 pan palette out of that. So I would just hold tight then. If those are not shades that you see 
that you could add to your collection and use, just wait. I personally, I feel like they're shades I would use because I already own them in the rounds. And then also I do like having different formulas and different options to choose from. You know, when you do palettes, it's nice to have those options for you. Okay, and that was just a little bit of chocolate wasted out in the corner. You probably can't really see it on this eye. You can see it a little bit better on that eye. And then pulling back out with this uh, Refer 27 and just blending around the edges a little bit. I'm not going for ultra glam or anything. This is just going to be a very neutral look. So there you have it. Those are the Makeup Geek Foiled Shadows. They're brand new. They're kind of fall trendy, if you will. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and remove this one, see what happens. There we go. So now I got a nice big one. So definitely, definitely um, check out Makeup Geek's Foiled Shadows if you haven't already, if you're looking to add some just really good, well-rounded, quality shadows that you know are going to perform every single time. They last on my eyelids. I would suspect they would last on yours because so I think I have the second to oiliest eyelids. I don't know. I just, I can't take first place on that one. And if you haven't already, makeup, um, makeup homework is subscribe to my channel. We're going to be doing these live streams every week. So let's talk about the next palette that we want to dupe. I've gotten some requests for some ColourPop palettes. Um, the Dream Street one with Kathleen Lights. Have no problems doing that. I think that when you dupe a ColourPop palette, you know, you get a lot of, criticism in the form of, well, why don't I just go and buy the palette so much cheaper? This one's discontinued, so I can see the value in duping it. Let me know um, down in the chat, down in the comments, what your thoughts and opinions on duping ColourPop palettes. I just kind of, I get a lot of, I don't want to say negative criticism. It's not. It's, it's definitely, you know, stuff that I listen to, but it is it doesn't make sense to dupe a palette with a, you know, a shade that costs $8.49 when you could spend $4 more and just buy the palette and you have the palette, the shadow, sometimes a mirror, you know, so on and so forth. So I don't know if you get my drift, but I get a lot of people being like, why are you duping that? It doesn't make any sense. But there you go. Um, the Natasha Denona Gold palette is discontinued. And if this is news for you, I don't want you to worry because I think that's the palette I want to dupe next. Um, however, I ordered a specific shade for that palette that I've been wanting because I don't know if my collection has one of these shades and it's the very first shade in the palette. But needless to say, we could do that one next if you guys wanted to, or we could wait a little longer and dupe some other palettes that are discontinued in between. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you think we should do next. And I think that is it for this week's um, makeup lab. Yeah, I, so I'm going to probably plan on doing some live streamings at nine o'clock on Friday mornings. Let's try to plan for that. If something comes up, I'll try to either scoot it back to Thursday or maybe push it out to Saturday. Uh, depending on, I know that there is a couple of Fridays that the kids are going to be out of school. So unless you guys want to see me like really go ADHD crazy uh, trying to manage this and my two kids probably better skip those weeks. So yeah, let's plan on every Friday, 9 a.m. live stream right here. This time it's 9 a.m. Central time, excuse me, Central Standard Time, and then it'll be um, 9 a.m. Daylight Time soon. And we'll get together, we'll uh, dupe some palettes, dupe the vibes of some palettes and have a lot of fun. Maybe create a look if we've got time. So on and so forth. I will link this down below. Does anybody else think this is cute? This is a coffee pot mug. Coffee pot mug right there. Doctor told me I had to limit myself to one cup a day. So there's my one cup. Um, 
yeah, hope you guys all enjoyed this week and I can't wait to see you guys in the next live stream. Bye.